what is the psychology of someone that is addicted to, to something? Mm -hmm. what, what is the uh, psychology? Of that? Well, I mean, the fundamental psychology is that this, this pleasure pain balance, which is in a very primitive part of our brain, um, you know, in, in, in the limbic brain or the emotion brain, deep in the brain stem, phylogenetically conserved over millions of years of evolution, unchanged across species. It's the same, that brain, that part of our brain is exactly the same as it is in the lizard, right? It's the lizard brain. And it's a very powerful mechanism. And it essentially, you know, in the process of becoming addicted, get, gets a, a life of its own. And when we're in it, we don't see it. So um, whether it's me with my romance novels or you literally climbing mountains, um, you get so, so that you don't even self, you're not able to observe objectively anymore. I mean, it sounds like you had some self-awareness, but I wonder if that was while you were climbing Everest or while you were in Nepal, or if it was really later after you looked back. And my guess would be that it was really later that it took mm -hmm. a break from doing that for you to be able to fully see kind of the mind state that you were in. But what essentially happens is that our, our, our lizard brain or our reward pathway ends up being the sole driver of our motivations and our choices and becomes, you know, probably literally disconnected from the prefrontal cortex, which is that, you know, big gray matter region right behind our foreheads that's so important for future planning, decision making, storytelling. Now, when things are working out healthily, our prefrontal cortex and our reward pathway and our limbic brain are talking to each other. And there's quite a lot of you know, back and forth. And, um, well, you know, I, I tried this and I had this experience and, but then I had these consequences. And so maybe that's not a good idea to do that again, or what, you know, whatever it is. Um, but, but when we get in our addictions, we, we, we are, th those connections with the prefrontal cortex essentially get cut off and we're just in lizard brain, um, and just, you know, being, being guided by these, these re the reflexive pull of our desires, which essentially, again, ultimately leads to a pain, pleasure, pain balance tilted to the side of pain. So we're now driven to pursue our drug of choice because when we're not doing it, we're craving and we're irritable and we're anxious and we're depressed. We need to keep doing it just to feel normal. Do you think that, I guess, someone with um, these addictive compulsions, that they have a mindset of kind of like, maybe this world is too mundane or there's just too much drudgery in modern life that do you think that that's possible? Oh, absolutely. So I mean, as I talk about in the book, one of the big problems contributing to compulsive overconsumption for all of us, is not just the ubiquity, potency and novelty of addictive drugs and behaviors, but also the fact that we have so much more time and we really don't know what to do with it. You know, not only do we have more days because we are living longer, but we also have more time in any given day. We have more leisure time than humans have ever had before. Um, we have approximately four hours of leisure time compared to two hours of leisure time a hundred years ago. And we're projected to have up to seven or eight hours of leisure time in rich countries um, you know, in the, in the near future. So it really does beg the question, you know, what, what do we do with all of this time so far? It looks like what we're doing is entertaining ourselves to death, um, which is not working out very well for us. And I think we're going to have to rethink that. Um, but, but it is a big problem. And I think in particular, people who are vulnerable to addiction are people who may find this world especially boring and are people who just temperamentally need more friction and need more of a challenge in life and if they can't find it then the addictive process sort of fills that vacuum for them